Shelter One Kite. I'm already into the 420, damn it. Legacy 420 has medicinal and recreational products down to a science, literally. With two biochemists on staff and a chief scientific advisor, every product is tested in the Legacy 420 laboratory. Legacy 420, Ty and Denega. Open 9 to 9 every day. Visit Legacy420.com. What are you doing? Nothing. Nothing? Why not? I'm trying to get on the Slice uh, Radio website. Sounds like a cool website. Yeah, it's all right. Oh. You're listening to Lifestyle Radio. The opinions expressed during this show are those of the individual participants and do not necessarily reflect the opinions of their associated organizations or Lifestyle Radio. You like music, you like weed, well we're gonna be good friends indeed. This is how much I like more than smoking trees. They'll make you dance the dozy do and teach you how to achieve a grow. Smoke a bowl on the 420 radio show. was on about looking for parking earlier. And we are yeah. here. On Lifestyle Radio. On Lifestyle Radio and the 420radio.ca. This is the 420 radio show. And Al, uh, Al almost forgot who and where he was, but that's okay. I did, Never. actually. I know. I could, Sometimes I could I tell. Do. I caught it. I caught it. And if you hadn't yeah. said anything, nobody would have noticed. <laughs> uh, but I noticed, and I think they should be aware of the situation. It's like that one piece of boarding at the lounge that is upside down, and it doesn't match the rest of the fucking pattern, and it drives me nuts. Everything else looks great except for that <laughs> one board. <laughs> It's the like walking OCD into some... kicks into gear, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like walking into somebody's house and seeing a crooked picture on the wall. I straighten them. I also That's put, so do I. <laughs> I also I also Guilty. will walk up to a clock if it's not working, I will put it at four twenty. <laughs> I won't do that. I won't change your clocks on. My mom that. has a couple of clocks in her house. One in her office that says four twenty. She hasn't changed it because the battery needs to be changed. You know, it's like the the remote when it stops working. It's you walk time for a new TV. TV? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So uh, we are uh, trying two things differently. We are in our chat room, which we used to have before. We have it again. Come on in there at 420radio.ca. You'll see a little thingy thingy. Just come on in there and choose a chat name and. Come and talk to us. You can also give us a call at one three two three seven nine five twenty four twenty, or look up Lifestyle Radio on Skype and call us there. Please add us first before you call on Skype because you know I don't answer to people I don't know. Um, what else? Uh, we're going to talk about some news today. Darcy unfortunately is not available tonight, um, but Debbie and Marcel are here. Oh, and somebody came into the chat room. It was me. Oh, oh, <laughs> pictures. I have okay. You so you can set the chat room so that it shows pictures or not, right? If you go into your chat preferences, right? I'm gonna say show pictures here. Where's the pictures? Pictures, pictures. Come on, pictures. Oh, yeah. I don't know where it is. Automatically load images. Oh, okay. Are you there, <laughs> Jim Carrey? Anyways, so hi, how are you? Or hi, how are you? How how high are you? Yeah. Um, Al Stone. I am because I'm smoking. I I spent the afternoon with my pal Matt at Shatterizer, and uh, he gave me some dog pound extracts, some uh, pink sherbet, which is a a sativa, and that's all I can see. It's an eighty twenty. Dogpoundextracts.com or .ca. I don't know. One of them. You'll find them. It's not so bad. I like it. It's it's clean and 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 I'm I'm getting tired of uh, um, getting shatters and stuff that uh, give me a headache from the butane. Oh, that's nasty. Yeah. Yeah. Whose shatter are you getting that still has butane in it? Well, uh, that was last year. Oh. I'm not, you know, I'm not going to dump on anybody. Things have changed, you know. Oh, was this the stuff you're making yourself? No, 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 no. <laughs> I don't make my own stuff. I, I'll squish. When I have my squisher, that'll be that. 
I miss my Squish. squisher. My squisher Squish is being it. held hostage at the moment by the Hamilton Police Department. <laughs> oh, they got your squisher? Oh, yeah. They got my squisher, my pillows, my sh- my shatterizers, like the st- our stock. Um, let's see what else would they have in there. Uh, my laptop. <laughs> yeah. Oh. As well wow. as, as Larry the Pillow. Larry Peak Cushion is in there. <laughs> I couldn't think of his name. I was remembering a cushion, but <laughs> my apologies to Larry P. I want my cushion. And to you, of course, as Larry P.'s parent? Surrogate. <laughs> Sur- <laughs> I'm his surrogate pillow. <laughs> and now he's lonely. I'm sure he is, man. He I'm probably sure he's covered in dust by now. In a cold, dark place oh, with oh Lord God. knows what. Stop, Debbie. Oh, man, there's probably I spiders crawling over and you. stuff. And the, I'm, I'm, a mouse may have made a house in there. Oh, yeah. Oh, poor Larry. Got his, Larry got his <laughs> asshole chewed out to make way for the rats. Oh, shut up, Marcel. <laughs> <laughs> now you've gone too far. Now. That's pillow, <laughs> pillow abuse. Uh, I didn't he, do it to the rat or to the pillow. Line. <laughs> Yuck. Uh, poor Larry. So uh, if you do get to Harvest Fest, Larry must come if he's been freed. Like should should we start a Facebook page free Larry? Hey Rose. What is your issue? Hold on one minute. Get over here. Meathead. Come here, Meathead. I understand dog. She said stop fucking ignoring me. Yeah. No, she's standing at the door. She Pretty heard somebody much. in the hallway. Somebody walked oh, by shoot. another dog. There's lots of dogs in this in this building, which is cool. And there's also a lot of pot smokers in this building. So, you know, that's we're, cool we're good too. both ways. Yeah. And my sister lives upstairs, so she walks the dog for me when I am uh, doing stuff. So I, I was wondering, Al, I don't know if you caught it or not, but should we start a free Larry campaign? We were talking about... We were, oh, that's so funny. You'll laugh when I say this. We were talking about, like, I was sitting, we we had a rental, and I was sitting outside all night, basically just checking IDs, right? Mm-hmm. And, um, and, and, and the cops kept driving by and looking at me. I'm sitting in the doorway of Gungeonistas, okay? Where, and the signs above me closed by Hamilton Police Department. And I'm sitting there, and the cops probably going by. What the fuck is he doing sitting there? And um, why did I bring that up? It was funny. Oh yes. So now, <laughs> free Larry. So, somebody said to me, "What are you doing there?" And I said, "I'm protesting." What are you protesting? I went the lounge being closed. So then Kelly and Michael said, "We'll bring signs," and so I'm going to tell them to bring a free Larry sign. That's it's a long story. I know. <laughs> but we'll do a free Larry sign just for you, Deb. We'll get a picture, Perfect. a life-size picture of Debbie and put her on the corner with a free Larry sign. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you you we're on a roll tonight. <gasps> I can send you a picture you could use. <laughs> I was just going to say, have you got a picture? (laughs) Here I am nibbling on some extremely strong candy shards. It could be an interesting show. Some magnificent creature just came into the chat room. Hello, magnificent. Uh, Hi. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I I, I now see uh, the anticipation of who this might be. We're just going to sit here and talk to people on the screen. Hi, people on the screen. Come on in the chat room at 420radio.ca, and I'm going to make my post because right Al's now. Al's going to put a post up telling yeah. you how to get there. That's what I'm doing. Right, Al? Yes, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> and it, 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 Meanwhile, would, Deb and I are going to talk about Al. I was just going to say, if you would find a subject other than me to chat about <laughs> for a minute or two, I will make my <laughs> post... And oh, then yeah, people will know how to get Way more in than there. a minute or two if we're going to start talking about you. You're no fun, Al. Why don't you talk <laughs> about Phil? 
Yeah, we can talk about Phil. Absolutely. Because, um, because be and that was kind of my, my segue there when I said there's a lot of people in my building that smoke cannabis. There is a gentleman out there where you guys live who is the complete opposite of that situation. And and why don't you take a minute while I'm making this post and, and tell people about that? Because it is it is a this is an issue, people, that is going to be Canada wide very, very soon. Yep. Okay. Rearing its ugly head in an apartment building near you. Yeah. Basically. Yep. Um, or a condos even. My mom's condominium, they have given everybody a warning that cannabis is not allowed on the premises or outside of the property unless you are licensed as a medical cannabis patient. Well, here in Nova Scotia, uh, Premier McNeil certainly didn't see fit to uh, add that caveat for medical cannabis patients. Uh, They gave the resident tenancy board the, the broad stroke to be able to deny anyone and everyone the ability to uh, consume and or grow cannabis in in a rental unit. And unfortunately, um, Phil Bennett in in Dartmouth, who's a medical patient in a in a heavy duty electric wheelchair, uh, had smoked the odd joint on his balcony, vaporized in his apartment, but there were complaints from neighboring units about the smell of cannabis, apparently. But he's been doing this for quite some time. The complaints never came out until legalization evolved. Ab- absolutely. It, right. it, uh, it's given people who may have a tendency to be discriminatory even toward medical cannabis patients that uh, legal loophole that they've been looking for all along so it'll go to the supreme court and let them sort it out which comes well, and- first the, the patient's right to to <laughs> a quality of life or or some whiny ass bitch who has no clue well, that's that's part of what Phil's preparing to do is take the argument to the Supreme Court. Once the complaint had come in, he was was told he was about to be evicted. Uh, he did manage to find another rental unit that I think will be more satisfactory for his needs, uh, and. Had that lined up for the 1st of June, but two days later after the media attention was diverted, even though he'd basically been (coughs) and could stay, the sheriff's team came and evicted him. I believe he may have spent one night on the streets, uh, another night with with a friend somewhere, and then between Higher Living Wellness Center in, in Dartmouth and Mom, we launched a campaign, fill up the pot for Phil to help cover his expenses while he stays in a motel so that he's not out on the streets. I mean, th- this is a, a man with health conditions in a motorized wheelchair. The last place he should be is on the streets of Dartmouth all night long by himself. Yeah, I think I'd read that he'd spent one night in the woods. He slept in the woods. Yes. In yeah. his chair covered with a garbage bag to keep the rain off him. Yeah, the last I heard, there was enough money to keep to keep him in a motel uh, until Monday. There's been a little more money raised in, in the interim, but I believe there's still somewhere in the ballpark of $800 that need to be raised to give wow. this gentleman a hand. Wow. Not only will you be helping to provide him a safe place to rest his head at night where he can sleep and be assured that he's not going to be robbed, brutalized, or Lord knows what on the streets of darkness, uh, but you're giving a hand up to a man who's prepared to take our fight, the plight of the patients, to, to the Supreme Court so that hopefully people who live in rental units in Nova Scotia for, for starters, won't have to worry about that concern ever again, and then it would give it legs to, to uh, go from coast to coast, certainly, if it becomes a Supreme Court decision in Nova Scotia. Wow. 
So I, if, I, if I thought it was if, legal. <laughs> if yeah. folks would like to donate to Phil, you could certainly um, do an e-transfer to chair at mumm. Dot .ca and the funds will go directly to assist in in uh, providing Phil with a safe place to spend his nighttime hours. Well, I wish uh Phil uh well because he's not the first one that I've heard having to go through this. And uh and like I said at the beginning of what we started talking about this this is going to happen over and over and over until folks like Phil stand up and say, wait a minute, this is going against my human right. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. it, you know. it's, it's, it's unconscionable that they do this to a man that they couldn't give him um, just a couple more weeks in the apartment that he'd already paid for had a place lined up to go to, how people couldn't tolerate things for just two and a half, three more weeks max. It, it's ludicrous. It's ludicrous that he was put in that position in the first place. Yeah. Well. Like, like you, Al, I had hoped for more positive changes as far as patients were concerned yeah. I mean, in the they, game they, called legalization, but man. There is no game called legalization when it comes to cannabis patients, though. Okay, this is all about... We rec. didn't get legalization. We got reprohibition. We, we, we got... We got uh, no, you s wait at the back of the line until we figure <clears throat> out this recreational shit. That's what we got. Well, and how many... Groups and individuals tugged on their coattails and said, whoa, 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 wait about, what about the patients? What about us? Couldn't you please, please, please iron out these wrinkles first be before you start with, with the next thing and bring in recreational? And now it's just such a schmozzle. It's, it's unreal. A schmozzle? Schmazzle. I'm trying to be well behaved. I'm, you, you, I'm leaving you, my pirate voice at home tonight. Your pirate voice. <laughs> I'm just going to be pissed off instead. <laughs> You're going to be pissed off in 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 uh, in, in in your own voice. <laughs> oh. Okay, I'm almost done here with all the posts. Well, and... while you're finishing that off, while and while we're talking about legalization and the implications for patients um i'm going to use up a little bit of time here uh yeah, go ahead we have lots alex leblanc um a medical cannabis patient from wolfel who also has multiple sclerosis called a meeting in wolfel monday evening and it was called cannabis conversations Mm -hmm. And he had hoped to attract some policymakers, had hoped to attract some politicians, had hoped to attract uh, some of the local RCMP. And in the end, it was a it was a small gathering of about twelve of us, I believe. Um, a lot of preaching was done to the choir, uh, a bit of education. But Chris Backer, who I'm sure some of our, our listeners know who he is, um, is the vice chair of Maritimers Unite for Medical Marijuana. And he, he prepared a statement that I'd like to share and read to you now uh, for folks who haven't had an opportunity to read it yet, because I think it encapsulates so many of the issues quite nicely. My name is Chris Backer. I'm the chair of Maritimers Unite for Medical Marijuana, a patient with a chronic illness and a consumer of cannabis for medical purposes. As a patient forced to use cannabis because nothing else helped, I, like so many others, find myself stuck in a position where I am forced to choose between my health and my freedom. This choice is not a new one. Pre-legalization, 
It was a way of life and a line I was familiar with crossing. With legalization came the hope of better days and a chance to live without fear of encounters with the police. Facing new possible fines, extended <laughs> jail times, eviction, and the loss of the freedom that comes from driving. The reason legalization is failing is because the people responsible for implementing the program know nothing about the product they're pushing. They're also not sick. They aren't forced to use the medicine that could land you in jail, unemployed, without a doctor, or facing huge fines. For years now, Health Canada's web pages stated their stance on medical cannabis, claiming it isn't medicine, and the only reason we are allowed to have it at all is because they lost in court. Legalization was created for the sale of recreational cannabis, and while patients begged to be part of the consultation process and to be listened to, recreational rolled right over medical just like we said it would. The new regulations have affected me in many ways on many levels. Just finding a doctor to sign for a medical cannabis prescription is near impossible. Many have resorted to now no longer signing, as it's available at the Nova Scotia Liquor Commission now without a prescription. Forcing people who've used cannabis to beat alcoholism or people who've beat it on their own to buy the, their cannabis at the liquor store is like setting them up for failure. Forcing people to use the recreational market will destroy any chances we have of having the tax on medical cannabis removed, like it is for every other product. As a driver and a patient using cannabis regularly, I'm at risk of being found impaired at a random traffic stop just because as a medical cannabis consumer, my baseline THC levels are always high, even though I'm not. When I wake up in the morning before I medicate, I'm already impaired by the regulations based on some arbitrary number that has no bearing on improvement. I've also been left with nowhere to consume my medicine that I need every day. I can't use cannabis in public because the new regulations have created a snitch society. I must now fear while sneaking out to medicate my neighbor or co-worker doesn't feel the need to call the police for my criminal activity. You're, we're, losi- rec- we're losing you, Deb. you got to move your mic a bit. You're back. As it's recommended by police in at least one press release. I'm fortunate enough to be able to medicate my own home. But as the vice chair of MUM, I receive regular calls and emails from patients in distress, questions or legal concerns, searching for answers. Since legalization, the majority of these calls are focused on tendency issues. None are more frustrating than the recent case of Philip Bennett. Here's a case of a medical patient, wheelchair bound, living in an apartment, now being evicted due to medical cannabis. He would medicate on his second floor deck. They wanted to make this 57-year-old man leave his apartment in his wheelchair to go medicate. Where? Not on the street or on the sidewalk without risk of police encounter. He's now been put out. He's living off of the kindness of others. Patients, not doctors, politicians, or lawyers. Not the ones charged with protecting citizens, not the ones employed and paid to look out for the interests of the public less fortunate. Another horrific side effect of these regulations are the parents at risk of losing children. As uneducated or zealous child protective services I equate parents' medicine drugs, thereby by labeling them as unfit and destroying countless lives in the process. Sick people using cannabis as medicine are not bad parents. Making that comparison is unconscionable. I can't medicate in my car in a parking lot on a rainy day when even the few places I'm allowed to use cannabis aren't sheltered. 
I can't find a quiet spot in the park away from everyone because that's illegal too and there are snitches. People who consume alcohol aren't allowed to do so on the streets. Therefore, bars can be found just about everywhere to provide a comfortable, safe, secure environment for drinkers to enjoy. When I do encounter the police with regards to my medical cannabis consumption in public, I can expect to be punished far more severely than an alcohol user in every way. Even though this is the case, vapor lounges staffed by knowledgeable bud tenders and other patients that help an already overburdened health care system are forbidden. Hospitals and clinics are closing. Doctors are leaving. People can't find help or people to care. But when patients come together to help one another, sharing their time, experience, and a little compassion, you want to shut it down. Another collective concept that fails to make any sense to politicians and policymakers is the idea of a co-op. Many patients live somewhere they can't grow, whether that's a rental, a condo, public housing, seniors' homes, physical limitations, or financial. But the idea of a large group of patients with no other options, all growing their poor plants for other medical licenses, on their own little plots of land and on a piece of donated property seems to escape you. I can only hope to be people that make changes needed understand. This isn't a business meeting to me. This isn't about making money or taxes. This is about pain, suffering, passion, and poverty. Thank you. We got most of that. Um, maybe, maybe you could. Uh, is that public? That, that uh, it's posted on the mum wall. Chris has it posted on his wall. Can you send me a link, and I'll I'll make sure that I post it on our wall. Sure. And and um, yeah. Like yeah, creative. thank you for reading that. I, I, I don't. You kept uh, drifting in and out. It seems like when you talk for long periods of time. Somebody says, okay, it's time to shut up now, Deb, and we're going to drop you out and then bring you back <laughs> and then drop you out and then bring you back. Yeah. We have some more people in the uh, chat room. we got Kind Langen and uh, Friendly Settler. We're uh, assembling our own little country village. <laughs> but can we grow cannabis there? Yes. Perfect. Why not? It, it's actually mandatory. It's mandatory, just like your job. If you don't grow it, <laughs> you, you get thrown out. It's kind of like this this poll that they're doing for testing cannabis in the workplace. Oh, yeah. Like, well, uh, seriously, if it's my workplace, if you're not using cannabis, you're not fucking working there. You're not even going to get an interview if you yeah, don't exactly. offer to smoke a joint with me. <laughs> yeah. And if, if you bring something better than what I already have, you're hired. <laughs> well, it means you know you're doing what you're doing, right? Yeah, you know what you're doing. <laughs> it you know it just blows me away that with legalization come all these heavy-handed policies in, in the workplace that were never there before when it was illegal. Hey, hey you know, when it was illegal, you could only be charged for seven different things. I want to tell you something. That if it was, if it, if the, if, if we had this back when I was in high school, I would have never smoked that joint with my math teacher. And I would have never have had those conversations with my history teacher. So, just saying. Everybody, this is called a break in the conversation or no, I'm, dead I'm, air. I'm Googling. What are you googling, Marcel? I'm trying. I'm trying to find something. Yeah, what drugs? Yeah, <laughs> I'm trying to find drugs. <laughs> I'm not the Nova Scotia Liquor Commission. <laughs> I can find all kinds. <laughs> Is the black market thriving still there? Oh, the black market's thriving everywhere. 
even in the U.S. Oh, yeah. 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 No, this whole legalization thing was basically a a scam. Oh, we're going to make it harder for kids. No, you made it easier for kids. (laughs) Number one. But in the bottom line, does it really fucking matter? Evidently because not. How bad is it for the kids? Right? But I hate I hate when they play the kid card when there's no real moral or scientific justification for playing the kid card about keeping it out of the hands of the children. Exactly. And come, and using using that as their their catalyst for this over regulated piece of crap that we have in place for a legal program in Canada. Yeah. I mean, Jesus. <laughs> Look, you know that your country fucked up when they make the law in such a way that you can go out and rape a 12-year-old girl and get seven years in jail, but if you give her a fucking joint, you go to jail for 14 years. You exactly. Go, you've got a bunch of retarded politicians. And that's Retard. exactly what we have. Retarded politicians and not knocking people with mental disabilities i'm telling you, these people are fucking brain dead uh, I, you know i don't even know what to could say you anymore. could you tell us how you really feel yeah i think i think i just have <laughs> thank you for listening and good night <laughs> yeah thank you and good mic drop <laughs> i dropped the mic but my head's attached to it so that would hurt <laughs> Smash. <laughs> I can see that. I can picture that. Clunk it right onto the desk. Poof, mic drop. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean seriously. We've got we before legalization there was like seven things you could be charged for with it with cannabis. Now I think there's over twenty five or thirty of them. Forty three. Forty see forty three. Yeah. I'll go back to this isn't legalization, this is reprohibition. I think I, I think that's the number I heard, but I may be wrong, and I'm sure that somebody, I've heard I've heard that as well. In. Well, I can. Yeah, I, heard I think 30, so too. 40, 44. 44 uh, any, way too many, anyways. Right? If you go from seven to anything more than seven, that's not legalized. <laughs> right. The whole idea of legalization is to take away those criminal offenses, not add more. Well, evidently, uh, they don't know what the fuck they're doing. So, which goes right well, back to if, the fact that we've got brain dead politicians. With legalization, with the thought of legalization through the years, there was always the anticipation that would come some level of a drop in funds being put into to law enforcement and the judiciary. Because there would be less people being arrested and prosecuted, not well, more. In an ideal world, that's what we would expect, but that's not what we get. And you've also got cops all over North America saying, we're not making cannabis arrests any longer. <laughs> okay. But apparently they are. Hey, I had my member of parliament look me right in the face and tell me that we weren't arresting patients in Canada anymore and two had been arrested across the country that week alone. And he got upset when that I was aware of, yeah. Yeah. But he said, oh no, he said, that's not true. There's no, no patients are being arrested in Canada now. So, we'll go back to the, my earlier comment about retardation and, uh, and uh, brain deadness. Everybody left the chat room, and I think it's a little scary for them. So we're going to put on some it's confusing. Uh, fortunate youth. Burn one. This is the 420 Radio Show. We are live here from Lifestyle Radio and 420radio.ca. Uh, we'll be right back. Legacy 420 has medicinal and recreational products down to a science, literally. With two biochemists on staff and a chief scientific advisor, every product is tested in the Legacy 420 laboratory. Legacy 420, Ty and Denega. Open 9 to 9 every day. Visit Legacy420.com. 
Hey, this is Cheech. And this is Chong. And you're listening to Lifestyle Radio. What is it? Lifestyle Radio. Say it one more time. 420 Radio? Ooh. You're listening to Lifestyle Radio. She ran away real quick just before we came back to air. What are we going to talk about her? She has has she has funny. <laughs> funny what? I don't know. <laughs> I thought you were going to say like she has funny bathroom habits well, or I something. I was wait, waiting for her to say something at that point. I thought she was back, but she came back. I am during that. <laughs> I'm just looking at edible insects you can consume when stuck in the wild. Go for it. Slugs. Slugs. Slugs are abundant during the rainy season, and you can find them at night. They're rich in minerals, which help maintain normal blood flow. They also contain around 12 to 16% of protein for every 100 grams. So basically 16% protein out of a big handful. Mmm. Another one, ants. Ooh, Ooh ants. ants. Where to find huge. them? 14 grams of protein and 5.7 milliliters of iron per ounce of ants. That's a, a lot of ants in and out. 
cockroaches. Mm, you can find them in forests and waste <laughs> areas. And they're rich in fiber and vitamins A and C. And certain types contain more than 20% protein. Are these covered in chocolate? So what's our best source of protein so far? Uh, the slugs. At 16%, I think. Well, if you can find the right cockroaches, you can get 20%. Ooh. Apartment um, cockroaches or house cockroaches? Uh, outdoor cockroaches. Forests oh. and moist areas. Yards, hollow trees, mulch, wood piles. Um, termites. Nutritional value of termites is 14.4 grams of protein for every 100 grams of termites. Well, 14%. Grasshoppers are the winners. No, they're not. Grasshoppers have 20.6 grams of protein for every 100 grams of grasshopper. You can get some big grasshoppers, too. Um, but here's the winner, grubs. Grubs contain both protein and carbohydrates. Some types contain as much as 42% protein. I'm guessing that those are those big, white, fat grubs that later turn into your favorite June bug. Um. So, grubs are your best source of protein. If you're lost in the woods and you need food, eat some grubs. Or uh, break out your cannabis Consistency is the hard part with that one for me. A little juicy. Um, but that's, that's all that sugar. Slimy. Well, no, that's the slugs. Slugs are slimy. They would just slide right down your throat. The grubs are yeah, good. Yeah, they uh, might slide right down your throat. Yeah, the grubs are the big, fat, meaty things that aren't really slimy. They got little legs on oh, them. Oh, yes, yeah, yeah, I know what grubs are. Yeah. So I, I apologize apologize to anyone who's trying to eat right now. <laughs> oh, yes, it's probably supper time somewhere, isn't it? <laughs> hey, you never know what you're going to learn. I'm just noticing for people up. that might... My- might like to vote. Someone just posted on the Maritimers Unite for Medical Marijuana Society Facebook page 23 minutes ago. CTV Atlantic web poll. Re, should employers be allowed to test potential hires for cannabis as a condition of employment? No. Do you check them whether or not they had a beer the night before with dinner? <gasps> Here are Maybe the results should. so far. Yes, if they want to screen for cannabis use, that's their right. 53%. Wow, I'm surprised at that. Yeah. I'm not. Because technically it, it's up to the company. Um, whether or not they want to screen for cannabis use. I would think it would depend on, and it makes sense if it was like this, it should depend on the business the type of industry because i mean i don't want a skyline driver on a fucking hoist crane to be you know sitting up there smoking a doobie while he's hoisting a big tub of fucking concrete up to the 54th floor but what about could he not have had one the night before and be perfectly fine on the work site the next day heisting whatever no. yeah sure. wherever sure so if what he's if, being tested, it would show up. Yeah. Yeah. So then he wouldn't get. He would be fired because not, he used it before, even though he's there's, cool. even though there's no impairment. See, that's the other thing. Is it's a matter of, of if you're gonna, you can test and screen for cannabis all you want, but before you let somebody go, you better prove impairment. You know what? I'll tell you something. For me it, and, and, and a lot of other people like yourself and Deb, because we're all patients that have been using cannabis for many, many years. So we've got we've got our regiment down, you could say, right? Yeah. We know what works. We know what doesn't. When we don't have enough of this, we'll substitute it with that because we know. See, then that's the major issue right now. Most people don't know how to do that. And the yeah. information that they're getting is not fake or false. It is embellished. It's sensationalized in the media to grab your attention because it's all about ratings. It's and who's going to get the award? 
What yeah, absolutely. <laughs> did you say sexy? <laughs> yeah. Oh. But I mean, the media is the media's goal is to try and entice people to read their crappy paper. Well, not all. They're not all crappy. Well, no, but in their in their right, they've if they've got to compete with tactics like that, then they're a crappy paper. You know what I think makes a crappy paper is a newspaper that has all kinds of advertise on uh, advertisement on their website, has all kinds of advertising in their newspaper, but yet they still only give you three views per month to look at their newspaper for nothing, where they yeah. could be just as a advertisement based site or newspaper like magazines have been doing for now what 10 years okay no it's, it's, but i don't have a problem i mean I don't, if, it, if it's if it's a quality publication then i don't paid have a subscription problem. stuff a, a paid subscription i don't mind doing something like that but a local newspaper has been built on that exact thing the local community they right. suck the community out of advertising money, the businesses in the community. Is that not enough? You know, ad revenue on the web is, is crazy now for newspapers and, and magazines. Right, you know. because more people can read it online for free, get the news online for free. So subscription rates for, for physical newspapers drops. It's only a buck fifty a month or ninety nine cents a month. That's not so much for the first three months, but then it <laughs> jacks up to twenty seven ninety five or whatever the fuck it is. Okay, right. But that's that's your online rates. But what about getting the paper delivered to your house? You go to the corner and buy it from the box. Rural areas don't have that option. Semantics. No, it's not. It's the same thing. But it's a, it's a matter of their subscriptions drop. If their scri subscriptions drop, they've got to make the money up somewhere else. Okay. All right. Because it's so, all about the money. It's everything's about the money. That's that's how business works. So it's a it's a matter of them making money. But the problem is, is they try and entice readers by making these outlandish statements. <laughs> Uh, especially when it comes to cannabis. A good case in point is, is seeing a headline saying that they seized an edible with enough cannabis or enough THC in it that it would kill the child. Yes, I saw that. They put that as a headline, and that's what was in the article. They grabbed and, it, yeah. Right, but it's it makes people go and read that article. We read it because we know it's bullshit, but other people read it and think, oh, my God, that poor child could have died if they ate that. I understand that reporters are, are busy, and certainly my observation of having worked with the media since about 2002, uh, that there's a whole less lot less of them than there ever were. But but it's not the reporters. Would, it's not the reporter that does the title for the story. No, but you would think with that statement having been made by the cops that, that it had the potential to, to kill a child that someone would have investigated that a little bit further. You would think before they put it out and use it as a headline. I mean, uh, absolutely. The, the RCMP I, retracted it and, and yeah, basically but, said that it – that. They shouldn't be using personal opinion because basically that's what it was, was a personal opinion from an uneducated police officer. A absolutely. But how many people in the meantime had latched onto that and have run with it and haven't bothered to change their their rhetoric either? Right, because it sells papers. Absolutely. Right. The more, <laughs> the more viewers you can get, the better it looks on your stats on an online site. And even if that was that cop's opinion, I'm sure a lot of people would be going, oh, yeah, yeah, I agree with him. I agree with him. That's what he said. I'm on his team. Yeah, Just exactly. because it's an authority figure with a bloody opinion. Yeah. And it's not science. Mainstream media sucks because they're sacrificing the bottom line for the actual truth. 
That's why I like papers like The Onion and The Manatee. Because <laughs> you know up front that it's already bullshit, but it's hilarious bullshit. And it's not being tried to pass on as true, although a lot of people unfortunately think it is true. You know what's funny for me is that fact that I, I post an article that, that, I mean, just from the byline, you should know it's not a, it's, it's, it's satire. Right. But it, it, it just baffles me how many people are, no, that's fake news. They're liars. You know, and they just get right into it just for the argument. Oh, yeah, that's that's the armchair warriors. There's oodles of them out there that just wait. Call them trolls. They're, they're yeah. waiting just <laughs> for you to, them I to say anything so they can jump all over it to make you look, I don't know, whatever. <laughs> but all they do is make themselves look stupid. We've had a few in our chat room, and I'm sure they'll come back. Oh, yeah. We've had a couple on the show. <laughs> they're like they're like Savoir Faire. They're everywhere. Yeah, there's all kinds of trolls out there. Can you imagine if I started like that would be a twenty four seven job if I started going and trolling all of these ones that are putting misinformation about cannabis on the internet. You could that would be a full time job, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, I was just thinking, I like, do you have enough hours left in your life, assuming you live to be 150, to, to do all of that? Nope, not a chance. But, uh, yeah, that's a, a that would be a monumental task, just to go out and start trolling the, the, the trolls, really. <laughs> You'd be a troll troller. Yeah, troll troller. Yeah. No... I'm not doing it. I don't have the time. I don't have the time for anything. Time and patience. Yeah. Marcel has the sniffles. He's not doing cocaine while he's on break. Yeah, I'm not doing coke. I'm, I have no trips planned to Columbia or anything like that. I'm sitting so, here because I have a, a beautiful stepdaughter who is also known as Typhoid Mary and brings home every cold she can get. God love her. Yeah, she's a sweetheart. So, Al, that was your segue for the Coke story. Coke story. Think. Oh, my God. Think, Al. Coke story. Al, cocaine. Cocaine. Medical use. Oh, oh. yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> on Irish show, because Ooh, I do. I could feel the light coming on from here. <laughs> I do the higher state with Ira Price, Dr. Ira Price with him. And um, we were talking about um, opiates that, that uh, have medical use. And I was like, I remembered, and, I, and he was telling a story about uh, cocaine being used in operating situations to open up your airways they put it in your nose and it opens up your airways and it and there's other reasons for it too and i was like dude okay i got my tonsils out and he said okay let me see your nose and he i said what's that as they were knocking me out and he said it's cocaine and then i went out and that's that that stuck in my brain. So when when we were talking about that, I asked him if it was true, and it's true. They use a form of a synthetic uh, uh, cocaine to open up your airways uh, when when just before they put you under anesthetic or something like that in in certain s situations, like like tonsils and stuff like that, I guess. So wow. I thought that was I thought that yeah I I thought it was I thought he was just being an ass. You know, he's like I was in my late twenties. When I got my tonsils out, I was 27 years old, so I thought he was being an ass because he, you know, he's an older guy. You know, he can joke around a little bit, but no, he was li he was not lying. Yeah, it's not like you tell a 12 year old you're shoving coke up their nose, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I, hope I, I hope I don't get any dro doctors in trouble now. <laughs> Well, I was just as you were telling that story, it crossed my mind. I'm wondering how. Uh, recovering drug addict would well, you know, someone like, with with an addiction to to coke would let's google this because there's got to be somebody that knows the, the, the answer. google what what do you want to uh, know 
uh, do they really use cocaine, synthetic cocaine in the operating room still? Or ever. I got to put some 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 uh, googling music in the background here. Okay? I found a nice article. <laughs> Uh, Just a sec. We got article music. And you don't think me and Mrs. Jones like would be kind of googling? No, no. It's it's Mark Marky Lyrical One Puff. <laughs> I, I I don't think it's too loud. So somebody will tell us in the chat room. I'm sure. Do you want the answer? Do you yes, want please. the answer yet? Yes. So, so cocaine is one of the most potent anesthetic and vasoconstrictors. These two, so it's it's cocaine's the opposite of cannabis, where cannabis is a vasodilator. This is a vasoconstrictor. These two characteristics make it an ideal medication for use during sinus surgery, as well as any nasal procedures where bleeding and pain may be an issue. Many physicians will use cocaine to help stop nosebleeds. I should have put on cocaine, damn it. Wow. <laughs> Many surgeons use cocaine during sinus surgery to minimize post-operative pain as well as minimize intraoperative bleeding. Use of cocaine also significantly de- decreases risk of nosebleed after sinus surgery as well as minimizes knees, need for knee. That's why so many people go get facelifts. They're getting, <laughs> they're going, I got my nose done again. <laughs> For the twelfth time this week. <laughs> so, so, I, so I talk like this for the rest of my life. Sounds cocaine like when used cold. for it now. Cocaine when used for illegal recreational purposes by snorting puts a person at risk for septal perforation due to its vaster, vasoconstrictor properties. In essence, the cocaine puts a chemical tourniquet on the blood supply to the septum, leading to the muco, mucosal necrosis and eventual perforation. So Afrin does the same thing, but on a much smaller scale. He wasn't lying. Before wow. anybody asks, cocaine... Holes in your nose? No, cocaine is never prescribed to a patient. It's only used in a hospital or office setting and heavily controlled under lock and key. So, yeah, you can go to your doctor and get some coke. Well, under a section 56, you could anyways. Well, he's going to he's gonna cut your nose open, though. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> let's see what's in here. Yeah, let's pass on. Let's pass on hospital cocaine. <laughs> Next. <laughs> what about medical Wait. meth? <laughs> uh, medical meth. Well, isn't meth medical anyway? Since it's made they, from cough syrup, they say that it is comparative to Adderall. Yeah, I was just going to say that. Yeah, but. Wouldn't it be classified as a medicine being the base is, is cough syrup? I thought the basis of that was fucking Drano. Oh, cough syrup. Depending isn't, on where you buy it, maybe. S- sizzip? <laughs> oh. Sizzip. That's cough syrup. Why? Do you, want me, do you want me to bring up a recipe for meth? No, no, no. Okay. <laughs> we, we teach cannabis shit here, not meth shit. Thanks. <laughs> oh, we can teach cocaine shit. All that cocaine that you put up your nose, it was processed with gasoline in somebody's feet. Do you know what? <laughs> Did you watch? Okay, so I'm sitting there. I, I really like uh, Gordon Ramsay, Chef Gordon Ramsay. I think that he's fucking awesome and he's mouthy and I love watching what he does. Okay, but I watched a show that he did because his brother had a cocaine problem and he wanted to get the bottom get to the bottom of it so he got access to the in the jungle where they're making it making the product and they put cement on the leaves they put battery acid like sulfuric acid on the on the on the leaves then they yes they walk on it and they walk on it and they walk on it until they get a sap and then they turn that sap into a syrup or a a powder, right? Well, no. But, then they rinse, rinse it all, rinse it all okay. with gasoline, and then it's all filtered. Yeah. And then what comes out, the gasoline's allowed to evaporate, and that's what you're left with is the white residue. 
is the is the powder. Mm -hmm. Wow. I mean, like, and and most people don't know that. I mean, you see cocaine; it looks pure. It looks white. It's like, wow, man, that's foot odor, gasoline, acid, concrete. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the powder is the concrete, probably. What's not to like, right? No, the the powder is, is cocaine, which is alkaline. <clears throat> So where that's does why the powder go? Up your nose. Ah, I bet the <laughs> concrete bonehead. Oh my god. It it would be filtered out. <laughs> Excuse me. Because it's gonna act as an abrasive to help break Fine. down the plant. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right? Uh, and I mean they don't all use their feet. Some of them use whipper snippers and things like that to chop it up. But usually the feet are gonna be involved because Crushing the plant's a good way to, to extract a lot of the juice out. Wow. Well, I, you could crush it with that whatever you like, but after you pour gasoline on it, it's not going to really matter, is it? What's the difference of, of that and using naphtha for making cannabis oil? Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's, it's, but you're not going to taste dirty feet over, over gas. I, well, no. I, I've had that. The, the conversation with you know who about that and and his methods try and true now I'd be curious uh, since Rick came of light with all this again if he's still using that method because I know JB isn't JB adds some things now oh, that doesn't shock me either with JB I don't know well I and also don't. the disclaimer from Rick Simpson is I uh, not from Rick Simpson, but of the Rick Simpson video is don't use the bloody rice cooker. Yeah. Yeah, Rick would... Because uh, they uh, go boom. Yeah. yeah, and Chris would know about that, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Having yeah. made oil hundreds and hundreds of times quite safely once. with his slow cooker and once yeah. with the rice cooker. Yeah. But it's geared for those shorter cook cycles, right? Where you can yeah. put your slow cooker on and probably walk away for a week even. Uh, I know a lot of people that use old coffee uh, makers that, that don't work anymore, but the heater pad still works. It's perfect. It gently warms it until you need it to not. Like a you coffee know. perk. Yeah, a coffee maker. Yeah, you just take it outside, plug it in, put your pot in there and let it cook. Nothing's going to go boom. There's no, no yeah. switches. Using a what? Coffee maker. There's the, a wa switch. The, the warming like a pad. Coffee perk. Just, that just goes the, the warming gurgle. pad. No, no. Oh, the just the warming pad. pad? Just the warming uh, pad, yeah. Like everything else is broken. I know a lot of people that do that. Everything else is broken. And so they just use the warming pad and you just leave it in there. You walk away. You come back a few hours later and, you know. And it's still there because because you're only at maybe 130, 140 degrees. Probably, yeah. It, it, uh, they usually let it go a while. Yeah. Day well, two. they'd have to. They'd yeah. have to. Day I mean, two. the, the but, uh, depends on what the solvent is. Isopropyl and yeah. grain alcohol are around 180 degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah. Um, water's 212. So you got to get it pretty hot. Yeah. Uh, naphtha is less. Hexane is even less than that. What Butane. is the best method to date? What are you trying to achieve? RSO. FICO. Full extract cannabis oil? Yeah. 99% isopropyl alcohol. That So, so uh, that is even better than... Because it's, it's the only, it's, it's it's the only one that, right? Right. It's the only one that'll give you the full extract. Yeah, and that's so, because it's omnipolar. Right. Okay. Um, See, could call some, it bi some, could call some it bipolar. <laughs> some things. Well, I was just going to say some uh, things stay put in this bipolar mind, mind to mind. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because technically it would be bipolar, where it's both polar and nonpolar solubles. Okay, so they're bipolar, not. Uh, but okay. if you're looking to achieve the highest THC content, then a solvent like hexane would be a much better choice. You see, I've I've had the conversation 
where I was told that, in fact, diesel would be the best. But there's too much benzene. Oh. It would strip it the best. Benzene is, is, benzene is is a good solvent for stripping it. The problem with diesel is there's so it's many additives, additives, chemicals, yeah. and oil yeah, added already to diesel. Yeah. That, so dirty. Yeah, that that so, would be the dirtiest of. But now, that would so be my naf- like. That would naf- be my the cleanest? last choice. Naphtha no. is the cleanest. No, no. So why 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 did he discover that method? Why did he decide that he's going to preach that naphtha is the way that you have to do this if you want to save somebody's life? Why 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 why? <laughs> do you want the truth or do you want? Um, his I'd like Rick reason. to call us right now and tell us why. Go ahead, Rick. Tell wait. him. I know the reason. Wait wait for the phone to ring. <laughs> Go ahead. I know the reason. reason. But, but back in the 70s, I mean, oil was made back in the 70s in people's kitchens with methyl hydrate, which is gas line de-icer. Wow. Right? Oh, Jesus. But it's the same thing. You still end up making an oil. And if you purge it properly, you've got an oil. But you're using a, a petrochemical, so you're going to have a benzene ring to it. How bad is a benzene ring? Well, that depends on how much benzene rings you're willing to ingest, I guess. Um, but That doesn't no, sound really healthy to me. No, but nobody died from the oil then. Rick started doing it in much larger quantities. So he needed something that in a, a similar solvent to methyl hydrate, but in much larger quantities that would be affordable. And easier to get. Naphtha was the choice that he went with. Camp fuel. No. Camp fuel's got dye in it. Don't oh. use Coleman camp fuel for your fucking oil because it'll come out red okay. and you're poisoning yourself if you do anything with it. Okay. You can go and buy naphtha. It's also known as white gas. Okay. Um, and it's perfectly clear. And that's the stuff that you would buy for your paint shop to clean your paintbrushes in your wash tank right. or your parts washer. Right. Turpentine, they used to call it. No, turpentine's another product itself. <laughs> right? But but people use it the same as they use it use turpentine in a wash bin for washing auto parts and things like that. Okay. All right? But camp fuel, which is naphtha, is white gas in a dye. Don't use that. It's got rust inhibitors and things like that for your little Coleman stove. Oh. See, and I know a lot of people that have tried to use that before. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I imagine they have because yeah. they don't know better. They don't know the difference. Well, now they should know the better because we've told them. I would hope they listen. Well, I hope they listen too. Listen, listen, people, listen. <laughs> for for a home user, <laughs> um, if you have concerns, then use grain alcohol. Um, and, and where could someone get that? Alberta and Quebec sell it. I was just going to say Quebec. <laughs> and, and Alberta. You can go to your doctor and have them write you a prescription. In and Ontario, you can take you that. Can that yeah. yeah, you can take that to the pharmacist, and the pharmacist will order it from the Liquor Commission. Oh, really? Yep. Because um, uh, I, the I, problem I, is, it's like 500 milliliters of grain alcohol from Nova Scotia Liquor Commission is around $50. Wow. Holy crow. Yeah, it's That's not That's quite cheap. cost prohibitive compared to the cost of 99%. Better exactly. to just drive up to Quebec and get some Alcool. Yeah. Um, that's that's not always an option for everybody. No. But Now, now in Ontario, I know that if you uh, get uh, the right paperwork done from your doctor... You can go into the LCBO and they will order it and deliver it to the closest LCBO to you. You see, here in Nova Scotia, you've got to go through a pharmacist. Now, I don't. Well, I was just going to say, I've heard that this was the case. Whether or yeah. not is truth, I don't know. Maybe they have to go through pharmacists as well. Possibly. Everybody's got to get their mark up. Possibly. Right? So it's a, it's a, a good, but because it's being prescribed as a prescription medicine. Uh, the liquor commission isn't able to fill a prescription. 
all they are able to do is sell you liquor. Mm. <laughs> so the pharmacist would probably be the one that would be responsible for getting it. You, you think, yeah, you think. But, I mean, you can walk down to your nearest near, needs and feeds and pick up a gallon of uh, 99% isopropyl that will do the same thing for, you know, 30 bucks. Okay. Or less. Or less. Pardon? Or, or less. less. Don't yeah. go to the dollar store. That's only 50 And dollar store, a lot of times, are bringing in rubbing alcohol, uh-huh. which is coming in from the U.S., which has been denatured isopropyl, What's, which what? means it's poison. Okay. So denatured alcohol is isopropyl alcohol that's had a poison added to it. So people won't drink and, it. Yeah, I was going to say, so that people don't drink so, it. So this is why when you hear people talking about making cannabis oil and solvents and anyone says isopropyl, the Americans all freak out. Because the Americans know that they their know isopropyl that as... is poison. Yeah. yeah. Right? Well, it's just like, you know... Uh, 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 codeine. Uh, you can get codeine over the counter here in Canada, but you can't in the States. That's right. At one time in some states, you couldn't even get polysporin over the counter. Really? Why is that? What's in polysporin? No it's idea. An, it's an antibiotic cream. Yeah. So it might just be the fact that it's got antibiotics in it. Yeah. Very likely. But it was, it was basically, uh, you had to go and either have a prescription or know the pharmacist to get it what a booming business when you'd have to pay a doctor to write your prescription for write a prescription for polysporin that's what under nine bucks a tube right yeah for your amphentago <laughs> <laughs> what a bloody cash grab it is and i don't know if it's all states but i know it was one state that had it that way they because i used to get asked to, to, to send them polysporin I haven't heard of death by polysporin before. No, I've seen it's like cannabis. Oh, God. That's hilarious. Death yeah. by polysporin. Dum, dum, dum. I need to get, <laughs> need to get some, some, some cool sound effects. All right. So uh, we're going to uh, take a quick break, and uh, we're going to listen to some Bud Buddy by our pals of the Royal Kush Band. Uh, this is the 420 Radio Show. We are live here Fridays, 7 p.m. to 9 or so-ish. We'll be right back. Hey, man. Go. Where are we going? Listen to the announcement. Attention, passengers. Uh, boarding now. Uh, flight 420. Hey, this is Cheech. And this is Chong. And you're listening to Lifestyle Radio. What is it? Lifestyle Radio. Say it one more time. 420 Radio? Ooh. You're listening to Lifestyle Radio. Legacy 420 has medicinal and recreational products down to a science, literally. With two biochemists on staff and a chief scientific advisor, every product is tested in the Legacy 420 laboratory. Legacy 420, Ty and Denega. Open 9 to 9 every day. Visit Legacy420.com. Again, no seeds to keep the stem. I wanna get blazed like I was 14 again. Wait patiently, grab my bombs and start cleaning them. I anticipate, where's my cash? Get a straight, gotta scale, check the weight. Better be no fucking shake or have no funny taste. For my money's sake, look, buddy, wait. I should get a break. The shit you said was great, eh? It's straight hey. For the money that I pay, you should roll me up in J. He said that's all she wrote. We laughed and had a joke. He got his cash and hit the road. I got my stash. I'm good to go. I need some bud buddy. You got some bud buddy. I got some money. If you got bud buddy and bud buddy and bud buddy. I need some bud buddy. I got some money If you got bud, but and bud, but it's in 300 BC It's been used by all men Marijuana is a cultural medicine Don't you believe all the things that you hear For ganja is coming Yes, ja is coming Remember the days pitching in on a dime And trying to get high with two spoons 
list with six guys Nowadays a joint barely gets me high Because I'm talking with Mary Jane on the daily Usually pay my respects on time Somehow it just seemed to slip my mind I need to see the man because it's Friday night And I can't get my head straight, can't get my head straight Call up buddy, telephone's ringing I'm getting nervous, hear the fat lady singing About to hang up, call it quits for the night Then I hear, I say hey We can talk about on air because maybe some people know the now. answers. Okay, oh, really? So let, yeah. Well, just, some we people might know back. the answers. Oh, okay, so let's see if anybody knows the answer. What's the question? I want to know what <laughs> processes the licensed licensed producers are using to make cannabis oils. So, are they? How are? They, what are they doing? It solvent with solvent or solventless? Are they decarboxylating, or is it full of CBDA and CBD, et cetera? Well, as far as it's I, an easy, it, as far it, as I understand, uh, a licensed producer uh, has to stay within the regulations and can't use solvents other than what is listed, where uh, a medical wrong. patient can. Wrong. Okay. Patients cannot use. Under the ACMPR, patients cannot use any flammable organic solvent under the ACMPR. But licensed producers uh, with either standard or micro license can use any solvent. I don't think that's fair. Why? Because we should be able to blow up our fucking houses if we want to. Well, let them blow up their bigger buildings. Okay. Because they'd be doing it on a much larger scale. So uh, my question for licensed producers are, what kind of solvents are you do, doing? What what kind of systems do you have in place? Do you, because we can buy shatter on, on the illegal market that's labeled and tells us how it was made on the shatter, whether it was butane, propane, whatever they, they want to use. Um. The illegal market will tell you tell us how they make their oils, but will the licensed producers? Well, the, uh, considering they're trying to patent everything right now, probably not. They, well, no, what they're doing, they can't patent. All right, they're making they're they're basically taking an extract and then they have to dilute it with a carrier oil. Well, that's fine. That's standard. Everybody's going to use the standard carrier oil, such as grapeseed, palm, MCT, whatever. But the question is, is how are they making the extract that they're diluting? And that's what I know, want to know if they're share. share. So I might do it in such a way that I'll ask these guys, but in such a way nothing will be identified. Because I don't want to know their process. I just want to know their process. <laughs> not their. I, I. 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 No. I don't want to know their process. I want to know their outcome. All right. 
You don't right. want to know how to do it. You want to know how it was done. Yeah, I, I mean, man, I know how to do it. They're, they're not going to teach me anything. I'm making oil. But I want to know, are they decarboxylating the plant matter first or are they decarboxylating uh, the finished extract? Which is easier? Or is it being de- decarboxylated at all? Which is easier? Before or after? Depends on the process. Okay. It, and, I mean... There's probably 300 different ways, probably more than 300 different ways to process cannabis into an oil. It's just a matter of which process. Each one has its pros and cons. It's just because really they're only listing on their labels whether it's CBD or THC. And what they'll do is Is they'll put... Is that they have to list? Really, it is, but... Because they, but they can combine THC and THCA, and combine CBD and CBDA. They get much higher values, but you don't have the same medicinal effect. Hmm. Right. So the number one question is: Is that a decarboxylated product that's that's being diluted, and is it done with solvents or without solvents? Well, some 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 things have are, are some things are better not decarbed, right? Like some things that you make. Why? Because you don't need to do it because they're carbed after. Like for instance, cookies. Why do you need to decarb before you make cookies? When you're cooking them, it'll cook. It'll decarb it when you've done it after you've made the butter. Are you going to cook your cookies at 221 degrees for 30 minutes? No. If it was cookies, you'd have to cook them for 30 minutes at that 20 temperature. Anyways, 20 at that temperature. I've, I've, actually, I'm guilty. When I used to make edibles, I bake cookies at that temperature, and it would take at least that long. <laughs> yeah. I mean, th- that's one way of doing it, but the easier way is to decarboxylate your product before you put it in. And to be cooked because you don't know if you can have it fully decarboxylated in that cooking period. So you're, you're kind of decarbing it twice when you make cookies or, or baked goods. Well, you can only decarb it once. Okay, now hold on a second. Here, I got a joint stuck to my lip. Um, I, <laughs> correct. Okay, just let's go back a sec. So... I'm decarbing at my 123 degrees for 20 minutes or 30 minutes or whatever it is. Then 221, yeah. Okay, then I make make my cookies. Or I'm, and, 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 or sorry, then I make my butter. Then I make my cookie batter, and then I put them in at, at 350. Isn't that usual for cookies? 325 is usually okay. a good temperature. Right. And, so, but 325 now, what, for about eight minutes. So once it's been decarbed once, that whole system is shut off it you can't decarb it a second time mm. Mm-mm. the whole thing of, of decarbing is you're basically taking one carbon molecule off the chemical chain understood all right it disappears off which converts it from thca into thc but uh, there are other there are other s- stuff that convert it there's other too, right Carbon molecules that could come off. Could you decarboxylate it again? I've got a funny feeling that you'd probably be at the vaporization point of the of the actual cannabinoids. And that makes sense mm. to somebody who doesn't really know what he's talking about. So, All right. So, if you want the full effect, decarboxylate it before you turn it into your baked good. Really? Okay. Um, that would make sense too, right? Yeah. So this is why Magic Butter has decarb boxes now. Oh. And oh. they it's when they when they you get a Magic Butter machine, there's also a little decarb box to put your pot in, throw it in the oven, and cook it. I haven't gotten one in a while. I didn't get one with the last one I got. No, they've. I think this is just recent, but 
what they realized was people running this through, you know, a four, eight, 12 hour cycle wasn't enough to decarboxylate it. So it wasn't getting its full effect. Well, they always say in their instructions, they have in, on, on, in, in every booklet with the instructions, it says always decarb. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I have a process that with my process, it's completely decarboxylated. There's no trace of, of any acid at all of THC or CBD. And I have a fully decarboxylated, full extract cannabis oil because I've got both polar and non-polar. And that is because of the way you do it. Yep. With the alcohol, the isopropyl. Isopropyl, but because I can get everything. But then my my process that I have for doing that part is what makes sure that it's fully decarboxylated and completely solventless. Mm. 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 For me to die from isopropyl alcohol poisoning, I would have to live for 150,000 years to consume enough to be lethal. I'm wondering what uh, what's being cooked in the background there. I hear somebody in a kitchen. Debbie's making roll and joint. No, oh, is that what you're doing? No, not yeah. high. Oh, I heard it sounded... up edibles. <laughs> I'm Somebody, not telling. Somebody's opening <laughs> a package of something. <laughs> She's going to eat a bag of chips in front of us because she got the munchies, right? I just rolled a joint of some MK Ultra wrapped in some some shatter. I think I already had one of these, but I don't care. I want another one. Good for you. Yeah. <laughs> it's Friday night. Fuck it. <laughs> so are we going to talk about Cannabis NB? What is that? Cannabis New Brunswick. Okay. That's their crown. Their crown corporation is Cannabis NB. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so <laughs> they've got like the biggest loss in the country, and they've been raked over the coals by the manatee are ever the, since. Are these the guys that that said that they blame the weather for their downfall or something like that? No. Oh, okay. They're they're blaming Matt from Apartment Six B. Oh, this guy. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, so they they uh they can't compete against Matt because Matt is awesome. Matt's always got product on hand. He's always there to, to answer your questions and, and most times he'll even sit down and smoke one with you. All right? And Matt will deliver. Yep. Cannabis and, and his prices are better than cannabis N B. So of course cannabis N B is all upset with Matt because they're losing money. So now they want to try and hire Matt. Well and I heard good old buddy Matt's been known to front people if he knows them well enough too. Yeah mm-hmm. I don't I don't think the O C S would would say, hey, hey excuse me, uh I don't get paid till Friday. Could I get a couple of grams off you for the week? Yeah. No. Well, yeah. Sorry, front me a quarter. So have the you, manatee. Have you got a the, credit card? <laughs> the manatee, for people that don't know, is a satire newspaper or a satire news site like The Onion, where it looks realistic, but it's really bogus. <laughs> and they actually have a, a hilarious one with the title of Cannabis NB Can Hardly Wait to Fuck Up Selling Edibles Too. So that's, that's an, a headline that I'm going to read. <laughs> and. They're pretty excited in this article to, you know, they, they say failing at weed is, wasn't easy, but we did it in record time. So now with the edibles, uh, we can botch that new corner of the market too. Wow. Well, the interesting thing I did notice is that, that they were tossing around the feasibility of going with private privatization as opposed to... Well, the current what, method. They they put a whole shit ton of money into these brand new buildings, all standalone buildings. They look nice. 
Um, I've never been inside one. I won't be inside one, but they do look nice from the outside. Um, and they opened up right away and were selling product right away. And then they started laying off staff because they realized that we don't need near as much staff as we thought because we don't have the customers. After the first day of lineups, because the novelty wore off, they saw the prices and the quality, nobody went back. So them privatizing it would be the best option ever. The problem is the privatization, the private market is still going to have to get their product from the licensed producers. And if the licensed producers don't have the product to give them, they're still going to be in the same problem that everybody else is in. Well, and if the government can't make a go of it, how the heck is the little guy going to make a go of it? Exactly. Dispensaries that we have and that have succeeded for years were supplied off of the gray market and the black market. We That was never hidden, right? Um, and that's why there was always quantity because if Matt was supplying the dispensary and Matt didn't have any product. Billy Joe down the road did. So there was always a supply for the dispensaries to fall onto. Um, with the oh, licensed absolutely. producers, a wealth of sources right. and for all of the derivatives too, right? Exactly. With the licensed producers, they don't have that option. They all jumped at, recreational to supply the recreational market they can't sell it as fast as they need to for the amount of locations that are open that's problem one problem two is they took a lot of the stuff designated for medical patients and sent that to the recreational market which left a lot of medical patients without and they were supposed to be there for the medical patients not the recreational market absolutely and not only that it's being sent out of the country as well Exactly. Yet another affront to people who use it therapeutically that, that once again our needs haven't been respected and they use sort of a generic we because I don't partake in in LP cannabis where I have a designated grower. Yeah. It's, I don't know. Somebody's got to change their thinking. But at the same time, you got to realize that these are the people that brought us 40 new th- 43 new criminal charges with legalization. Yeah, huh? All right? Yep. And the insane driving laws with arbitrary THC limits set that mean nothing. No scientific basis for it whatsoever. And you, you know what? It, it, it would be... It would be somewhat okay if even one major police force said, you know what, this works. Because then there'd be some validity. There's no validity to it at all. Are they even using it out there? They've got, yeah. a, they've got a new one that the RCMP or something like that's bringing into effect to try or something now. And it's ironclad. Is it going to prove impairment? Uh, I, you see, that's the thing. Then it's not knows. If it doesn't improve, if it can't prove impairment, then it's not ironclad. Okay, well then, you know, so tell me what's the only, there's only one way to prove impairment, is there not? Pretty much, yeah. And that's what, a blood test? No. That would be somebody recognize, or somebody trained to recognize impairment well, from isn't that any a, Isn't any that what drug. a drug recognition officer is? Yeah, and he's got to be able to, to prove that you're impaired. Do you know your name? Do you know where you live? Can you walk a straight line? No, I can't. But but right. but, but, you? but you're but, a medical but, patient. But. Me? No. Yeah, I can't either. I got MS. Do you think I could walk a straight line? Not a chance. I can't even stand up in a straight line. I can't. I can't close my eyes and touch my finger to my nose. I, I can do. Can't I can, but up. I'll fall down. I can't even <laughs> pee in a straight line. <laughs> that's because of that piercing it goes out the side you no it out. goes in a little squirrel <laughs> it goes like a little tail there a little pig's tail it spins around <laughs> too much information uh, way too much <laughs> get back behind that baggie in your underwear uh, no I mean uh, 
Shh. Do you remember <laughs> back when the MMPR first came out, the, the proposal came out, and everybody went ballistic? Yes. And I, I said it was. We were this. listening to that announcement. Yeah, and I said that you know, this was written by lawyers to keep them in business. Nothing's changed. This whole legalization was written by lawyers to keep them in business, because they're going to be fighting this in courts for years. The driving, impaired driving, is a good one. Being thrown out of your house, yeah, because you. Sp- but is a good one. This is this is a great ploy by the lawyers just to keep them in business. I find it extremely sad, and I'm seeing it like in, in all aspects of life. Really, so many groups taking the government to court to resolve issues because they're too busy listening to corporations and won't listen to people who have their their feet to the street, if you will, to, to have to live with these issues. Yeah, and exactly. really understand things at a grassroots level and the nuts and bolts of it, and they just just uh, brush us aside like like we're nothing. They are, they are uh, from what I understand, they are changing what a quote-unquote bud tender will be able to say and will not be able to say. And I believe that what it's going to be is they are not allowed to usurp, I think would be a good word to use, their own personal opinion on that strain. They can only talk about what has been set to talk about with that strain or something like that. There's... There's a new there's new courses that you have to take to be a, a bud tender. It's like a smart smart card. But these thing, these right? these are Ontario. This is Ontario pro- yep. provincial. Yep. Yeah. 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 Other yeah. provinces aren't going to necessarily do the same thing. <coughs> you see, and that's Excuse that. Me. Uh, how how stupid is that? Here's a stupid for you in Nova Scotia. They expected ten percent of the sales to be online. They were only 6%, so they're using that as rationale to open two more bricks-and-mortar storefronts. Do they have the (laughs) cannabis to support it? No. Are they not only running three days a week or something like that? Oh, no, ours are open all the time. Oh, so you guys are okay out there? Yeah, because everybody goes to Matt and Apartment 6B. (laughs) Yeah, they well, aren't there. Matt, Matt, Matt and Six B is like my best friend now, you know. <laughs> Me and Matt will be talking a long time. <laughs> and they've been lamenting provincially that they aren't pulling in the money that they anticipated in Nova Scotia either. No, oh. but it's, it's like I say, we never had a lineup at our dispensary in Amherst. Because we've never had a dispensary in Amherst because everybody has their own friggin' dealer or grows their own. You just outed about twenty five hundred people, you know. I'm kidding. <laughs> Dude, they, they owed themselves. Everybody a long... with the name of Matt is squirming. Yeah, they owed themselves long ago. I wonder if there is a Matt living in an apartment six B somewhere around here. <laughs> That'd be cool. Please stand up. Yeah. It uh I don't know, it's it's very poor thinking on their part. But it was for, very poor thinking with the whole legalization because they shouldn't have tempted legalization without fixing the medical f- system first. Absolutely not. Crawl before you walk and make sure that you do a damn good job of it, right? Because they could have turned around and licensed the existing dispensaries, ease them into the LP market, instead of just doing a Gestapo rake type thing um, to supply the medical market, then once once the, the distribution chan- chain is set up with the licensed producers through those dispensaries, then go ahead and open it up to the recreational market. Well, and as well, the dispensaries could have had, had supply from medical patients who were fortunate enough to be able to produce more than than the uh, confines of 
of their license and from their their license and their uh, designated growers. Absolutely, and it would probably have brought a number of people off of various forms of welfare and assistance and given them a better quality of life and sense of self-esteem, helped with all sorts of mental health issues, and the whole nine. would have had so many positive spin-offs for society, particularly in a place like Nova Scotia where we've got so many areas of of uh, economically disadvantaged people in general. <laughs> I'm not laughing at you. I'm just. Well, I was just going to say, Marcel. <laughs> no, I'm just laughing at the whole situation. It's just. It's, I don't so know here, if do you laugh or do you cry? The truth really. is stranger than fiction, right? Oh, it's nuts out here. Um, yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Uh, can I just take a second? I, I'd just like to send my condolence out to the family of uh, uh, Mama Bear, who passed away this week. Um, we've got a thing going on this weekend. You'll see posts if you're a friend of hers. She was a very, very well-known person uh, in the community and a helper and uh i was privileged to be able to spend a little time with her and she will be missed yep i'm sure it's always sad when when we lose one of our soldiers and friends yeah and mm. she's been in the community i understand i've only known her for about a year now but she's been in the community for a long time and uh yeah so it's it's said she was always a smiley face when she came in even though there was a lot of pain and stuff there going on. So, yeah, she was very sick, unfortunately. So, anyways, um, <clears throat> we still have uh, 15 minutes left. Uh, you want to, you, you, off the top of your head, you got anything that you want to, any grow wisdom that you'd like to share, Marcel? No, I think Since we should Darcy. talk about Darcy. Okay, let's talk about Darcy because he's probably listening by now. Unless, I mean, of course, he, unless, of course, he's in jail somewhere. <laughs> he did a really good job standing us up tonight. Yeah, well, you know, he didn't bring his headset. And then he, <laughs> he answered the call when we called him, just, just mm. so you know. So he, he was available. <laughs> but without a headset, we weren't going to let him be on air with you. Because that would have been mean to everybody. So, mm -hmm. And hear him driving back from the other end of the province. Nah, we can we can pick on him in person. He'll be here next next week. No. Oh well, yeah, he'll be on show next week. He'll be here next week. Um, you can smack him on the fifth. No, the sixth. Eighth. eighth. Fifth, sixth, eighth. Yeah, I'll 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 I'll, I'll flick him in the ear. What's he gonna do? Run away? Where's the uh, legal cannabis stores in Toronto? Uh, <laughs> like I've been downtown. Uh, uh, no, necessarily. Uh, I I think we've got what with Tokyo Smoke is one. Yeah, and uh, Honey Pot is another, and um, uh, 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 Buddy in Apartment Six B. Math. Uh, Matt, I know Matt. <laughs> no, his name's Dave. <laughs> oh, um, Dave's not here, man. No, because nothing really happens for us until the seventh and eighth and ninth. Um, but we're going to be there the sixth. So maybe we'll go to the Honey Pot and have a laugh. Go wherever we, you go wherever you want to point the car, buddy. Uh, play taxi cab. Hmm. We'll find something to do. Oh, I'm, yeah, you think? What are the smoking laws like? Can I walk down the street smoking a joint in Toronto? I'll show or, you where. Or, or is the Gestapo going to jump out and grab me? You know what? I mean, I've been walking up and down the streets of Toronto since I was 19 years old smoking it. Ah, since I, ah. So, but now I it's mean, legal. La, la, well, I was just going to say, I don't know. I What I do know is in Hamilton, <laughs> you're not allowed to smoke in a park anymore. 
a public facility, a recreational area, it, it, it was smoking, cigarette area or not, you are not allowed to consume cannabis in any way, smoking or vaping. Most of the city in a buildings. Smoking area? Yep, yeah, as well. Uh, most of the city buildings already have no smoking, no vaping signs up, like the courts do already. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so. Yeah. Well, that's going to suck. No, 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 no. We'll go costume. We, we, there's lots of places to smoke. So they're not going to let me smoke a joint off the CN Tower, are they? No, but you can hang your you can hang off the edge. Right, but can I smoke a joint <laughs> while I'm hanging off the edge? If I'm going to pay two hundred bucks to hang off the edge, it's they better let me smoke a joint. Let me think now. Uh, <laughs> the CN Tower is a provincial building, I believe, or what is it federal? Either way, mm -hmm. we're not allowed to smoke in, in in Canada anymore. Yeah, in anywhere public. That doesn't make sense. I don't know. But you could get a picture of me hanging off the edge smoking a hash pipe. <laughs> I think that we should. Uh... I don't need to go in the CN Tower. I've been there. No, I'd be I'd be happier to go to the aquarium or something. To be honest. That's where I'd rather go is the aquarium. Yeah. Or the science center. Yeah. Three. Th how many? Who's coming with us? Uh, just me and Darcy. Oh, so, Lenny's not coming? No, no, Lenny's going to uh, conference us. Oh, okay. I'm going to check and see what's going on on the Saturday. Uh, there's, uh, we're talking about Lyft, by the way. And, yeah. and, and uh, that is the... Uh, 7th, 8th, 9th. No, the 6th, well, 7th, 8th, and, and 9th. No, 6th, right. 7th, and 8th, right? Is it the Sunday as well? I think it's Sunday as well. But, oh, let's pull up the website, <laughs> shall we? <coughs> but the 6th is just the business conference. Yes, 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 yes. But you seventh, can go. The 7th, you, you can, but you're paying for it. Well, okay, um, but most, you know what? Let's let's be honest, okay? Most people that go to these things now and then have the money to go to these things. Oh, yeah. Okay? Yeah. Like, I don't. So I go and I report. I report and I report and I report. And um, I report. Sometimes I'll even report. <laughs> okay. So, So we have to decide if we are going to do a show that Friday and from where. And we won't know that until the Thursday. I know, I know that. Mm -hmm. But we could we could do a show on Thursday. Well, we could do some stuff while we're out and about. Oh yeah. Like um, we could we could Toronto. do a. What can three potheads do in Toronto in twenty four hours? <laughs> uh, June six is business conference day. I'm still entering my birthday. <laughs> oh. And then June 7th, which is the Friday, is Industry Day. Um, so that's really, you've got to be part of the industry to get in the door for that one. Okay, cool. So you're and looking then, at, at what to do? And then, Yeah, and then the 8th and 9th is the Saturday and Sunday, and that's the Consumer Weekend. weekend. And that's okay. where everybody gets to go in. And I'm looking at the the uh, what to do at the expo page uh, uh, at li li liftexpo.ca. Uh, it's put on by uh, Lift and Company or Lift and Co. I want to go to this seminar, CBD, so, Milestones, Myths, and Downright Malarkey. When's this one? 1220 on the Saturday. Oh, cool. So uh, on the main stage, there's going to be things like... Uh, uh, bedroom cannabis, sex, and other intimate delights. Uh, CBD milestones. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the down down and right malarkey, right? Yeah. Parenting, parenting, parenting. <laughs> Smoke another one, Al. Parenting and cannabis. This would be a good one. I got a funny feeling that Darcy's not going to see me and Lenny a lot. We're going to be a lot of these these things. 
Cannabis Investing 101, choosing the hottest companies, funds, and options. Yeah. Let's see. And there's a vape showcase. Mm -hmm. Lake located on the street level of the metro. Blah, 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 blah. Dedicated exhibition space for the la latest vaporizer tools and technology. But you want to know something that I don't see anywhere on this at all? A vapor lounge area. Probably oh, don't wait. have one. A place to meet. We will be covering uh, covering over 200 square feet of exhibition. Oh, no, never mind. No. Uh, there is no lounge area for vaping. I guess we'll be outside again. Unlike the old treating yourself expos when there was a massive vapor lounge with every description of vaporizer to check out. And last last uh, last month at the O Cannabis, uh, I would say a good a good one quarter of the main floor was dedicated to alcohol right in the center. You know, and that's really ev everybody t asks me what I thought of it, and that's basically what I say. It was interesting. There were lots of vendors there that were uh, and companies that that had some interesting stuff there, but. To have such a large area for alcohol, but no area for us to vape or, or smoke is, yeah. you know, this was an industry event, as is Lyft. You know, mm. would you consider Lyft an expo or, or, or a conference? An industry expo with conferences. There you go. Um, only because it, there's... A lot of the industry is going to be there showing off what they have new for products and things like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. And there's uh, a lot of, actually a lot of really good seminars. And then there's a demo stage. Um, yeah, I saw that. And, and they have Home a Grower's Guide to Planting Cannabis. They have charging stations so you can charge up your, your phones and stuff. And free Wi-Fi. Yep, yep. Although but that's they don't have to be very slow. If they don't have a pro, uh, uh, an area to, to smoke cannabis, then they've got a, a major problem. Uh, we usually stand outside. Yeah. Or go across the street to the park. You're allowed to smoke in the parks? Uh, it's 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 uh, across the street at the CBC. Uh, it's just an out courtyard outside. Oh, so it's not an actual park. It's CBC's front yard. It's their courtyard. You know, they have there's yeah. yeah. But they, you know what? In the many years that I've been going down to the International Center for these events, uh, or the, the Convention Center, sorry, uh, the only thing that we've been asked to do is stay close to the to the road while smoking. And every now and then, because, you know, usually there's a baseball game or something going on. And at some point, there's a charge of people going by that are exiting from whatever's going on. And the right. kids will, sometimes the kids will walk by with their shirt up on their nose or their jacket up on their nose or their glove because they're coming from the baseball game. You know, so there's no real place to just sit and hang out. But that's where we hang out. That's where they've given us. Right. So, you know. Poor planning on their part. Well, I don't know. We'll find out, won't we? Yeah. When we get there. I'll send them an email. Where can you smoke cannabis at this event? Inquiring minds want to know. Oh, yes, we want to know. We want yeah, to know. we want to know. Yeah. Go smoke. But no problem to have that beer. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Glad, glad to walk down the street with a beer in Toronto? Uh, no, not yet, but that's changing. You can now, uh, I don't know what the new laws are. They're making changes all over the place here in Ontario. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Ford is just, you know, sticking his foot in it. Uh, he went from a buck of beer to, like, now he wants to uh, give all the hunters hats. So, you know. Yeah, I and saw making, that. $100,000 for the hats. 
making tailgate parties legal outside yep. of uh, concerts and the like. And you can go into a bar now at 9 a.m. and have a drink. So what is he, like the party premier? Uh, uh, Doug Ford and his brother, uh, you know, the mayor who died, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, they used to sell some really good hash back in the day. Yeah. And and now he's just, he's turned into like, I don't know, he's just like, we're open for business, but you can't smoke here. Yeah. yeah. We're open for business, you just can't open one and don't bring any any liquor. All I know is I'm going to get my my uh, plates for my car soon, 420 radio. Oh, yeah? So, But I'm waiting until they get the new plates out, so it'll say 420 radio, a place to grow. <laughs> <laughs> they'll be like, eh, no, sir. <laughs> yeah, I bet they'll deny you. Well, no, but if I get it now... And then they won't be able to deny me because it'll be before the changeover and they'll be, they won't be thinking. So maybe I'll try and do it right now. Well, you can have a seven-letter license plate, right? I guess your limit is seven letters. Yeah, I, I, have, I have. I think no, it is. I've seen, I-H-R-T-P-O-T. I've seen, uh, I have seen um, longer ones. But you, you can get vanity plates, which is, is if the letters will fit in your vanity plate, then you can do it. Well, you can get that here in Nova Scotia, but I think it's seven letters. Yes. It is. Well, no, it's seven letters in the crown here in Ontario. Yeah. Because there's a crown in the center that breaks it up. It's it's one, uh, four, four letters and then usually numbers after that or something. I don't know. At least that's what mine is. I don't know. Like, I'm going to say my fucking plate number on the air. <laughs> yeah. Don't say your plate number. No. But no. I-H-R-T-P-O-T. What's that? License plate. <laughs> I-H-R-T-P-O-T. It's not that hard, Al. Oh, I, I heart pot. Okay, I get it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> there, I don't. And now there's half a dozen listeners rushing out to get that on their plates. <laughs> in 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 how how many provinces? I I don't know. It's been a long time. I was in school. How many provinces are are, are there now? Well, there used to be ten, but then they decided to cut one up. Who? Northwest Territories. So they're not a part of Canada anymore? No, they are. But what they did is they split Northwest Territories and made none of it. Oh. I've watched shows about that place. None it's of it? It's cold. Yeah. Wow, man. Yeah. Things you learn. You know what else that we're learning right now? That it's, it's ten o'clock. A it's seven fifty nine or eight fifty nine. No, it's nine fifty nine. Okay. So, I don't know what we're doing next week, but we'll be here. Yeah, and maybe Darcy will be here too. Maybe. Fucking guy. That would be awesome. If we let him. I need some chocolate. <laughs> I'm gonna call my sister and see if she has any chocolate. Oh, I made chocolate the other night. Mm. Chocolate covered strawberries. Ah, oh, dude, come on. Four of them knock you on your ass. One of my favorite. <laughs> yeah. One of my favorite. Bring some with you. Bring some some treats, would you? Please. Bring some treats. I'd have to make treats. Well, you have to make them anyway, so you can bring them when you make them. Yeah, get Depend on that, Marcel. Depends on whose suitcase I'll put them in. <laughs> Why would it matter? Well, it depends on what I'd be bringing you for treats. Don't worry about ice cream, because I can get that here now. I'm not bringing you ice cream. Oh, you know what I had? Uh, uh, <laughs> last summer, I had a creamsicle, a medicated creamsicle. It was fucking awesome. Yeah. It actually was a creamsicle. I got... Um... I made blueberry ice cream, wild blueberry ice cream. 
Oh, that sounds yummy. Oh, actually, I think I like it even better than the chocolate. And I love chocolate. Hey, it's a full moon tonight. Yeah, I know. I wanted to go with my telescope, but it's too too cloudy. Ah, uh, it's right in front of my face right now. It's I can, I am looking at the moon through the wires. <laughs> I look out on. I'd be a, surprised if we'd be seeing it here tonight either. I look out over a uh, one of those wire fields, you know, uh, hydro uh, hydro line fields. So I got a nice view of the sky with hydro lines, which is kind of cool. All right, we're done. Say good night. Good night, all. <laughs> good night. Good night. Peace out. So what are you doing? Nothing. Nothing? Why not? It's time to get on the Slice Style Radio website. Sounds like a cool website. Yeah, it's all right. Oh, I might have it. You might have it. You're listening to Lifestyle Radio. Legacy 420 has medicinal and recreational products down to a science, literally. With two biochemists on staff and a chief scientific advisor, every product is tested in the Legacy 420 laboratory. Legacy 420, Ty and Denega. Open 9 to 9 every day. Visit Legacy420.com. So what are you doing? Nothing. Nothing? Why not? It's time to get on the Slice Radio website. Sounds like a cool website. Yeah, it's all right. Oh. You're listening to Lifestyle Radio. The opinions expressed during this show are those of the individual participants and do not necessarily reflect the opinions of their associated organizations or Lifestyle Radio.